Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I had a request to do a tutorial of this little uh, birch tree scene that I did in my sketchbook for, um, I didn't do it for an Inktober prompt, I just did it in my Inktober sketchbook. And I thought, oh, this is easy, this is fun, this is a great one to do a tutorial for. And you can do this in your sketchbook. I'm gonna do it on a greeting card since I already have one in my sketchbook. I thought this might be kind of a fun card to send somebody. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna first draw a border. Now, if you wanna tape yours down, you totally can do that. I love these T-squares. This one is by Mr. Penn, and I paid, uh, I think like $6.99 for a pack of three, and they are so wonderful to have. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the, um, I'm just eyeballing it as far as, I want about, I don't know, maybe between a quarter and a half an inch of border. You can make yours as big or as small as you want, but I think it kind of gives you like a finished look that's kind of pretty. You obviously can, don't have to do it, or if you tape it down, you'll have a border and that will work well too. That's something I like to do in my sketchbook a lot is draw a border. I often don't tape, I never tape anymore in this uh, particular sketchbook. This is one of the Viva watercolor, well, I don't think they call it a watercolor sketchbook. It's just their sketchbook. It's a premium ivory paper, but it's uh, it's made in India. And for some reason, I find that tape often will tear the papers made in India. This is what it's what it looks like. It was their Inktober one. It has 32 like sheets, which is really nice, 120 pound. Um, I have another this size, but it doesn't seem like the paper is exactly the same. So I got to see if I can find that paper again because I really like it. But there we have our basic um, our basic border sketched on there. And I'm just gonna keep this on camera so you can see. And you can use any watercolors for this. I used the Viviva color sheets on this, but then I thought, oh, this would work really well too. And I haven't used this in a while. This is the Koli Noir watercolor wheel spring collection. Hard to get in America, easy to get in Australia. So if you struggle to find that set, honestly, you can use whatever you want. I thought it would just be fun to use it because I had this set out for another project. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, I haven't used that in a while. That's, that's fun. All right, I'm just gonna sketch right in with the pen. That's something I do a lot in that in my sketchbook is I just kind of go in with pen. And this is a Tombow Fudnosuke uh, hard tip pen. And I'm using this because you can get a variety of uh, different line weights just by how hard you press. And also because this is watercolor paper, um, it's uh, I feel like it's just a little bit gentler on the pen. Um, if I use like a fine tip micron or something like that, it, it seems like it's um, it wears down those nibs and this nib just seems a little bit more resilient. And plus I'm kind of lazy, so not having to change when I do, um, when I want a different thickness is, is, is appealing to me. I like to make things kind of start off the edge sometimes. Now this one has some mushrooms kind of going over the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch those in. Um, I took a photo, and actually the photo's on my Instagram. I'm not looking from the photo, I'm just looking from my previous uh, artwork. But I do have a photo of the trees that I used for reference on my Instagram account, if you want to go check that out. Uh, I am at Lindsay Wyrick on Instagram. And I might post it on the community tab here as well, if I remember to. <laughs> oh, this, I was like, this is, this is a really fat tree, but it's not because I haven't done the other side of the tree yet. Um, but I'm, I'm doing more sketching without pencil first, like just sketching in with a pen and I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. And I would like to encourage you to give it a try if you've never done that because, um, it's freeing. It's very freeing. And I don't know, I think sometimes we just get in our heads a little bit too much and we make things a real big ordeal when they really shouldn't be a big ordeal. And so, so I wanna avoid that a bit. Uh, I'm gonna draw some, I think the mushrooms to me are kind of like the, the star of the show. So I just wanna get some of them in here. I know it's like a really weird angle. They look like they're not at the right angle, but it also looked like that in my reference photo. So. If you want to change it up because it doesn't seem right to you, you go right ahead. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. You draw yours however you want to draw them. They almost remind me of teddy bear ears. There are certain mushrooms that are edible called like chicken of the woods and apparently if you cook them they taste like chicken. Not these, but um, that's what I'm told. And 
I have some friends that find them and then they, they post about them. They're so proud when they find them, they post about them on, uh, on Facebook. It's really cool to see. It's like, go you. I'm not eating something I picked out of the woods, but <laughs> you rock on my friend. <laughs> I think it's great. I really should know more. I got it. My husband got me a book about foraging, foraging. And he for it's funny because he forgot he, he got it for me. And then he like saw an ad for it. And I'm like, yeah, you bought me that book. And he's like, what? And I'm like, remember? I have like uh, no survival skills. Except baking bread. I can make bread, so, and I have one of those wheat, those grinders where you can grind the wheat berries into, uh, into wheat. So that would be my survival skill. So, you know, end of days, hopefully someone will let me in their camp and I can make bread. And I do sourdough, so I know all about, like, uh, cultivating the fermentation. They say catching, they say it's like sourdough is like catching wild yeast in the air. I think that's total baloney. I don't think that's what happens. I think it's just fermenting any like natural yeast that is in the, um, in the flour or like you can find fruit, a lot of fruit will have natural yeast on it as well. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's catching wild yeast floating through the air. I think that's an old wives tale. I could be wrong, but it sounds fishy. It's, it's super sus. I'm drawing little peeled back bits of uh, bark as well. Now you can go on um, on top of this, like say you've done your watercolor washes and you're like, oh, I wish I had more shading there. Just wait for it to be completely dry and you can go on top of it. Unless you're using a fountain pen, then you could probably go on one when it's damp, unless your pen is, I don't know. I, I hasten to give advice on fancy fountain pens because I use cheap pe fountain pens because I am not one to be trusted with a good pen. Um, but I've been having a delightful time playing with some fountain pens that are quote unquote disposable, but they have so much ink in them and I'm just having a ball with them. And I work on draw on wet paper, work all like a uh, sketch with it. Then I'll water it out with a, uh, with a wick of water brush and then I'll work on it with, um, with, uh, I'll go back in on the wet paper and with a fountain pen and it works really nice. I'm adding some of these little marks on here. Sorry if I kind of go off on a tangent. Um, it's, it's, it is hard to draw and talk at the same time. Now birch trees have this like, um, these like line, this like peel, this, this, uh, bark that kind of peels away sometimes. Um, and it's got these, uh, if you ever looked at a China marker, you know how those markers where they have like you peel off the strips and relief, re, release the lead? That's what a birch tree kind of reminds me of. And you have these little marks and these little lines. And the lines are going to be a little bendy because they're going to be like, they're going to go with a cylindrical um, mode of the tree. Plus you get these little shadows under the, um, under the peeled paper bits and under the mushrooms and stuff. But you know, you'll have some like more darker spots and specks. And then you're gonna have some lighter ones. Now take your time with this. I'm going um, probably a little faster than I did the first time just because I'm very aware that I'm recording and I try to, I wanna be mindful of your time. I don't want you to, you know, this is a pretty easy concept. I don't want you to have to watch a three hour video for, you know, if you can get the concept quickly. Um, I like to pull in some little shadows from the side like that. Painting birch trees is so fun. I probably have quite a few. Now I made a mistake there, so I'm gonna turn that to branch. <laughs> um, I have quite a few birch tree tutorials on my channel. Now these pens here, I really like these. Like I mentioned, you can vary the nib. They're also pretty affordable. Um, the pack that I usually buy is a pack of three and you get a hard tip, which is this one. You get a soft tip, which is the one in the navy blue body, but they have black ink. And then you get a dual tip that has, um, it has gray on one side and black on the other. And this is $4.99, um, for the three of them. And it, throw those, that, those pens in your bag. And I feel like that really does a lot of what you need to do. And if I can have only one pen, I would take that, that dual gray and black one. I think there's soft tips on the, the dual one, but I mean, you can do so much with just that, with just that nib. Now for shading, you can also do uh, stippling really well with these. You can get bigger dots by pressing harder. You can do little dots by working right on the, like if I have my 
thing right on the tip. I could do little dots, trying not to get my hand in the way. I know that happens. Um, but I just find the overhead filming is the best for, you know, seeing a tutorial. So I'll just try to move my hand out of the way here and there. Now, of course, if you're more comfortable with, um, with using a fine liner, so you can choose the size of the line that's going to come out of that. That's totally fine. I know like if you have some sort of um, neuropathy or um, issues with your hands, you might not be able to like control that pressure as easily or even feel what what the what the tip of the pen is going to feel like, what sort of resistance you need to give it. So yeah, if you have some neuropathy um, or strength issues in your hands or sensitivity, nerve issues in your hands, you're probably going to prefer to have a fixed size nib. Um, so like a set of fine liners from Micron or a Hoo Hoo would be good for you. There's so many affordable options out there. I like the, um, God, I'm just rambling today. I like the, there's a version by a Hoo Hoo that is liquid filled fine liners and they work with alcohol ink and they work with their waterproof under, under watercolor. And they're not that expensive. I think they're about $15 for a set of, I think it's like 12. And there's a ton of ink in them. So I just think they're going to last a lot longer than your typical fine liners. But they also have one that's got, they've got a set that's not liquid filled. It's like your regular fine liner that's got um, a, bun a variety of the black sizes. And it's got a 0.5 nib and a bunch of colors if you like to, if you like to ink and color. You can have little bits of peeled off bark on the edges too. Just have them go right off the side of the tree. And also another way you can adjust your line width if you don't have a lot of pens, if you have say like a 0.5 fine liner, that's a pretty common size, and you're on watercolor paper, just like kind of work on the corner of the of the um, of the pen for a fine line. I can show you that actually. This is a um, Spectrum Noir art liner in point or not point five, point not five, not point five. How do they say that? It sounds so classy when British people talk. Anyway, um, you know, you can work really on the corner of it and get a really fine line, or you can work on like the full um, tip of it and get a get a fuller line. Like the um, the Viviva set that I have, the, the color sheets and the fo folio that I've talked about, that gives you a 0.5 zig uh, manga liner, I think is what, it's, what it comes with. Uh, at least the one I did came with that. And so that's what I'll do to adjust my size. Like, actually, I can sketch a lot quicker with this because I don't have to be so picky about how much how much pressure I can. If I want a thick line, I can go on the tip of it. If I want a thin line, I'll work on the corner of it and just kind of scribble. Do like kind of a little bit of a scribbling motion here. So, you know, we all have our favorites. And that's what I... That's what I'm always stressing is that just because I like something doesn't mean it's going to be best for you. Just like you like, just because you like something doesn't mean I'm going to like it. And your favorite YouTuber might love something that you don't like. And you might think, oh, it's, it's, I'm a bad artist. I'm not getting the hang of this. My favorite YouTuber makes beautiful art with this thing, but I cannot get it to work for the life of me. It's not you. It's the product isn't right for you. That's why there's a bazillion, me, jillion different art supplies because we're all different people and we all like different stuff and we all have different working um, methods and we all have different, um, we all have different, what, what do I want to say? Um, pros and cons. We all have different abilities. We all have different techniques that we like. Um, something that might be easy for one person might be very difficult for somebody else. And then those two people, the other person might find something that's really easy for them. And the other person has difficulty with it. So we all have our strengths and weaknesses. That's what I mean. But we all have our, we all have our, our strengths and weaknesses. And, um, it's important to acknowledge that and not to beat yourself up if you're not getting the result that somebody else is getting with a product, because it might just not be for you. Take colored pencils, for instance. I like a soft pencil. But um, I don't do a lot of layering techniques. I work quickly. I like to I like to blend. I like to do techniques like that. So my friend Lisa from Lockery Fine Art. I'm sure you know her if you follow color pencil artists. Um, well, if you don't, you should check her out. We like absolutely the absolute different. <laughs> There's some pencils we both like absolutely, but like I love a soft lead. So 
pencils with like really soft leads I'm loving and she's like these are the worst pencils ever but it's just we have different we have different um we have different preferences I'm just I'm sure that we probably have different preferences on watercolors and other things as well just because we work differently it doesn't mean that either of our work is bad or either of the way we work is bad it's just we have different preferences I prefer to blend where she prefers to layer um we're all a little bit different and Also, if you have a product, you've got a thing, you're like, oh, I really want these, I love love these pencils, love seeing what other people are doing with them, but I can't get it to work right for me. Maybe it's not the pencils, maybe it's the paper. Maybe you're choosing to use a paper that um, that doesn't work very well with that media or for the techniques that you want. There's some paper that I love, but I don't love it for all media. Yeah, I love it for certain media, but for other ones, it's uh, like Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. I love that for watercolor. But if I'm going to use colored pencils, that is not going to be the best. Uh, that's not going to be the best product for it, you know. It doesn't mean just. It doesn't mean if something's more expensive, it's going to be better either. Which I think is something that people often think is the case. If I pay, you know, thirty dollars for this pad of paper, it's going to be so much better than um, than this one I paid you know, $15 for. And, you know, probably $30 paper is going to perform better, but it totally depends on what you're trying to do. If you're using alcohol markers, that $30 pad of arches is not going to work better than the $10 pad of, you know, Canson XL. Because it's a different, it's not the right product for the medium that you're using. I want that to be kind of like a dark indent. And give it the mushroom the spongy texture. Generally the wood mushrooms don't have the gills like ground mushrooms do. And let's see, I think on some of these the, I will go in with a smaller pen and do um some of the uh just the texture on the peeled back parts. I think that looks good. Now you would leave this black and white and I think that would be quite pretty. What I want you to do now is make sure your ink is completely dry. Watercolor paper has a sizing on it and that can make the ink take a little bit longer to dry than you're used to. So say if you are using a pen like this and you usually use marker paper and alcohol inks and um, you don't have to let it dry so often or using a different paper that you know your pen dries really quickly on with watercolor paper just make sure you give it plenty of time to dry or it will smear you can speed it along by using a heat tool if you like and um, I'm going to do that I'm going to hit it with a heat tool for about 30 seconds and then when we come back we're going to start adding color if you want to pause the video here and catch up on the pen uh, portion of this please do that and then uh, we'll paint this together. And the painting's gonna go really quick because we put all the time in on the ink. And I was rushing, guys, so if it takes you twice as long, that's fine. Take your time, enjoy yourself, and we'll meet back to paint it in a second. All right, the, um, the ink is dry, and the first thing I'm gonna do is pick up a little bit of yellow. And I have not used this paint in ages, so hopefully. Oh, that's good. I didn't, I was worried about it being a little too bright. I don't, I didn't pre-activate it because these paints can be pretty, um, pretty strong. I'm just going to go in and throw in some patches of yellow. Clean my brush off. Now I'm going to grab some pink. Kind of just, uh, making sure it's not too bright. Oh, that's lovely. I'm going to add it into the edges of the yellow and get kind of a peachy color. I want the, the trees to be kind of light, and I think I'm going to make my, my background a little bit darker. I want the trees lighter and the background darker than what I have here because I feel like that's a little bit too similar. Everything's a little too similar in value. I'm going to pick up a little bit more pink. That's a little dark, a little darker than what I want. 
going to try to avoid the mushrooms a bit. I haven't decided if I'm going to grab some, um, some brown or not from another palette. I did grab it over here in case I wanted it. Um, I'm going to make some purple. I'm going to take, uh, I'm actually going to take this kind of teal, teal blue and the pink and see what that gives me because I don't want it to be super strong. Oh, that looks good. I'm using these new brushes that I bought. Um, and I'm kind of getting used to just trying them out, trying them out because I'll review them eventually, but I like them a lot. I think I want to make some peach. I'm going to take the yellow and the pink. Add that to the mushrooms as well actually that's kind of a pretty color for the mushrooms I'll probably go in and add a little bit more on top of those but just kind of as a base color and I want some of that teal on its own in there too one thing I don't let don't like about this set is that it doesn't have a mixing area that's not clear the the clear mixing area is a little bit tough to uh, Tough to deal with. Oh, that's such a pretty color. These colors are so transparent that um, you can't, it's it's hard to make a mud because they just uh, will show up kind of. Instead of making mud, you'll make a pretty brown or gray, which I think is kind of nice. Um, yeah, I'm not going to decide yet whether I want to put any brown on there, but I want to keep this, like I said, lighter and I'm going to have the background a little bit darker. So I'm going to do the same thing on the next guy here. I'm going to make some peach color. Some pink on its own. Oop, that's a little bright. <laughs> you can see these colors in the tree. They're not this pronounced, but I like to uh, I like to push the colors. Show the muggles what I see, right? We show the muggles as artists, we show the muggles what we see. Add a little bit of teal to that. Make some purple. And this will make such a pretty greeting card, I think. I like to put that purple in the, in the shadow areas and in the center. Maybe a little bit on the edge as well. And now we'll go in with a little bit of teal here and there. This overlapping color is so pretty. If you live somewhere where it's really damp, you might need to, um, if you want to get that kind of like an overlapping look, you might need to let it dry a little bit because, like I said, I got the, uh, I think I said I got my space heater on, so things dry really quick this time of year, winter, or I guess it's fall, but in Maine it, once you have your heat on, it starts to dry. Things dry really quickly. That one's more psychedelic than I intended. <laughs> well, if you get it too dark, if you don't like it, if it's too dark for you, then you can just kind of go over it and blot it a bit. I mean, these, these paints are very inky, so they will want to stain, but you can lift some of it out. Um, let's make my little... Uh, brownish color here. Paint the mushrooms. I'll probably go in. I probably will use some of that brown from the other palette because I think I'm going to want some in the background. Um, the reason why I wouldn't necessarily want to mix 
the brown in the background for the tr little like trees and stuff. I want the um, I want the them to stand out and not completely fade away, and to mix it to the color I want. It's probably going to end up a little bit juicy. Plus, this will give it the, the mushrooms a little bit more contrast, having them have those other that other pigment in it. We should use these paints more often. They're awfully fun. Very, very inky, very fun to use. Okay, and the last one we're going to do the same way. And by the time we get over there, it's going to be pretty dry over there, and we could probably don't even have to dry it before we put our, to put our background in. I love to paint things unusual colors. The nice thing about the pinks is that it's going to give you nice contrast, color contrast from the um, the greens in the background. I love that if you do overmix for these, you just get kind of grays instead of muddy browns, which is which is nice on the birch trees. All right, so now what I want to do is do the background. Maybe I will do a real quick blast with the heat tool just to make sure that it's dry. I think it will be. What a cute little card, don't you think? Don't you think that'll be a cute little card to send somebody? I think so. Honestly, I can paint a card, I can draw and paint a card much quicker than I can craft a card, like stamping and collage and stuff. I don't know why that is. All right, I'm going to wet the, um, wet right up to my line. The reason I'm wetting the paper here is because I want the colors to blend together. And I didn't necessarily want that with the, uh, with the trees. I want to have a little bit more of a patchworky, a bit of color on the trees. Okay, now I'm going to add the teal. Love the points on these brushes. That's why I wanted to find something to replace my um, my cheap Joe's pseudo sable because I've used them so much that I've worn the tip down on my twelve round, which is the one I use the most. And that actually, the 12 round had the better tip on it, even compared to the smaller ones. All right, now I'm going to take some of the green and kind of dab in. Now that is a very bright green. I think I'm going to take that and add some of the red to it because the red is an opposite, even though we haven't used the red yet. See how that makes it more earthy? I'll add a little yellow to it as well. That's pretty. That's a nice sap green color. Adding the red and the yellow to that. That green. I think I'll blot some of the top color out though because it's just getting too juicy. And I didn't have the yellow in that green yet, and the yellow really made it look nice. Okay, I'm going to go to the next area and wet that. Go, you can go right over those skinny branches. You don't want puddles, you just kind of want um, you want it kind of shiny. It doesn't. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be perfectly. That's pretty dark. I'll blot some of that off. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly wet because you can go in with your brush and you can scooch up against the edge of the tree. It's probably better to have a little bit under, leaving a little gap between the tree and the um, 
in the background when you're wetting it just so that you can kind of nudge it up with the tip of your brush and that way you don't end up overlapping the side of the tree. I always start my color when I'm doing a sky at the top because usually um, the sky color gets lighter as it goes down. These would be trees on the top of a hill, but by the time we've got all the other colors in it doesn't really matter. Some more yellow. So I did the green plus red plus yellow to make this kind of like sap green color. I used a little bit too much red because it's looking a little, it's looking a little too brown. So you can mix your own brown. But I've already dipped into the other palette, so I think I'll probably just use some browns from there. It's drying so quickly on me. I'm going to fill it in with more, more color on the bottom because I do want that to be a little bit darker than the trees. I'm going to take some brown, I want to do some like skinny branches in the distance. Just kind of give the hint of there being more forest back there, more trees. Maybe I'll go back in with another layer of color actually because it's not as it's not as dark as I want it to be, but we'll see. I mean it didn't have a huge amount of contrast there. And something you could also do is highlight the trees with white, either a pen or paint or whatever, uh, pencil. I'll clean off that pan while I'm at it, making such a mess. It's also quite a shift when it dries, so like it can be a little shocking when you're like painting. You're like, wow, this is so much darker than the one I just did, but I think it's, I think it's just the drying shift. Some of that brown and do. trees far away. And we've got our last little bit here to do. Your paints do get more uh, juicy as you go because you've they've been sitting with as you've added water to them they get a little bit more activated. I like to clip my cards down to a piece of cardboard rather than my table or a piece of foam core. This is a piece of a scrap of mat board actually, um, because then I can move them around a lot easier. And it helps with brush control. I just have to keep in mind that I do not have tape on there, so don't go too crazy with where you're putting that paintbrush. 
And then let's take some brown. I like to start the trees at the bottom though, because generally I would think it'd be darker at the bottom, you should have a thicker line at the bottom. Okay. It's looking all right. And now I think I'll take some of that brown and and the darker brown add it to the uh, interior parts of some of our mushrooms to give them a little bit of contrast. The interesting thing though, when you're working, like when you're in the woods and you're painting in the woods, is that there's not a ton of contrast. Everything is almost camouflaged with itself. It's a, uh, you don't have as much variation in values. So it can be very chaotic when you're trying to paint in the woods because it's, you're trying to pick out contrast, you're trying to pick out um, different stuff, different elements, and it can be very difficult because everything will kind of start to look the same. Uh, okay, let's see. I think I want to have a little color, a little bit of peachy color. That's what I've got here. Not, oops, I don't have enough on there though. I'm just debating, do I want to lighten up the trees or do I want to darken up the foliage? I think I want to darken up the foliage. I think that would look kind of cool. I think I'll take, um, I'll just mix up some of the blue, some of the green. Some of the yellow. Maybe I'll just glaze over that or just maybe add another layer of You know what? I think I will just make up a really dark, dark green. Make almost like a pine green. So red, blue, and green. Ooh, that's almost black. Look at that. Let some light come through, but I, I'm thinking kind of like uh, hinting at maybe like some evergreens. I don't know how much that look like evergreens, but. going off I'm going off script so what we've done so far has been kind of like what I did in my sketchbook but I'm also feeling like I'd like to have a little bit more contrast and it does dry a little lighter so hopefully I won't regret this Too late now, we gotta keep going. Well, at least you have learned the technique anyway, so even if you don't like the way that I'm doing this layer, and if I don't like the way I'm doing this layer, it'll, it'll be fine, because you'll have learned the techniques. Clean off that palette. <laughs> Oh wait, I'm adding 
I didn't add yellow last time. Oh, this will be all new color. Thinking maybe I should just glaze over. Well, let me get this last bit of texture in there, then maybe I'll just do a glaze over the entire background just to kind of unify it. And I still might end up brightening up, brightening up the trees. Hmm. I don't know, guys. <laughs> That's what experimentation's for, right? We don't have to know. We don't have to know. All right, so if I do a glaze, I definitely want it a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna take a bunch of yellow. I'm gonna mix up enough so that I don't have to stop. I can just do the whole background and then call it good. I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it. And a bunch of green. I'm thinking that maybe I only swatched out this palette because I had the bigger palette that I was using. I think that might be the case. All right, so we're just gonna we're gonna go over the entire background with this color. Yep. No longer is it on a hill. Now it is deep in the dark, dark woods. I did not pre-wet because I want to have a fairly uniform glaze. Just kind of tipping it, doing a controlled wash. But the, th the nice thing about it being on a greeting card is it's like, oh, it's just a greeting card. Go over here, do this middle. These brushes hold a good amount of paint and water. Not doing the typical like have a bead of paint controlled wash because these are such small spaces. I'm hoping not to have like a a bead of paint at the bottom. If uh, I'm just referring to the controlled wash technique if you're wondering why I'm doing it this way. Yeah, I don't like to paint the same thing twice, so that's probably why I'm going off script here. Hopefully I mixed up enough to get me through. I think, I think I'll be able to start at the bottom here because it's just a little easier. I didn't wait for things to properly dry because I don't think it's really going to matter that much. Let's see, can I scoop out just enough paint to get this last piece? I think I can. I think I have enough left of the brush. I'm curious as to how this is going to look. Are you? <gasps> We're going to have to let it dry though. So much like, yeah, this will be super quick and easy. <laughs> it's, well, it's not hard, but it's not quick either. All right, so let's let this dry, and then we'll come back and we'll see if we want to do anything else to the tree. All right, I had a little break, and I came back, and I'm just kind of looking at this, and I like this one better, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, you, you, <laughs> you can see where to stop to get that effect. I think what I'm going to do is put some highlights on the... Uh, some of these branches and then I'll kind of go from there because the branches just kind of got completely lost. Actually, you could even add in some extra branches with it if you wanted to against the, that uh, background. Oh, I like that. Oh, what a difference. Okay, I think... 
I think that'll work. That looks nice, I think. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that, that works. Um, I think I'll grab a colored pencil. Maybe add just a little bit of uh, highlight on the trees in some areas with this white Prismacolor. Maybe on some of like the peeled, peeled birch area. And the mushrooms. Yeah, why not? I was going to take a cream colored pencil to the mushrooms, but you know, we've got so much going on. I think we're just getting the edges with the colored pencil will do the trick. And hey, look at that. You know what? We ended up getting two different looks. Um, yeah, we got two different looks. I think that works. So now you can see, <laughs> you can see two different ways to do birch trees. Isn't that fantastic? I hope you enjoyed this little demo here today. I guess it wasn't that. I thought it was going to be like 15 minutes. And what has it been like three and a half hours? I don't know. A long time. But uh, we got two different looks. And I think actually with that little punch of white, I think I like that. I don't know. I still think I like this one better. But, um, but I think they're both fine and I hope you enjoyed this and give it a try too soon. Oh, something else. If you do end up making like some mistakes, I'm going to give this a quick shake before I, before I try it, make sure my ink is nice and fresh. Um, if you do find that you're getting some ink outside of the lines when you're doing this technique, I love to just take a white pen and clean things up. This is the white pen from Mr. Pen. It comes in a pack of six for like seven dollars and you can get it on Amazon. And these are great. Uh, nice and opaque and they are always ready to go. So there you have it. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crafting. Bye!